everyone I know it's been a while since I've done a video I've been meaning to do a few videos based off of recent incidences and stuff like that I just been so busy and tired that I haven't had the chance and when I do I'm just like kind of nodded out so I thought I would come on and say what's up to everyone um, I'm, I'm on here today um, because basically like <laughs> I don't know, I, I was listening to, to Tariq's uh, dissertation on music and stuff. Very interesting dissertation, you know. I, I enjoyed it. I have some things that I'd like to say, though, in regards to that. Some he probably might not agree with. Because um, I had some differences with some of the things that he said. But, you know. <laughs> um, when we talk about music and frequencies, yes, there there are those things, you know. Um, and I'll be honest, you could, my, my thing on that is like, no matter what kind of chords you use, whether it be so-called happy or sad, you could use those for good or evil. Um, when you think of happy stuff, yes, there are joyous things that you could use as far as chords go, um, to kind of, uh, you know, play, play, um, really fine music to to where you could make someone happy and and there are certain sad melodies and stuff in, as well but one thing that i will say is it's funny um there is a thing called the tritone that a lot of people talk about um or they'll say that well that's the devil in music and to be honest that's that's actually a western construct because in the east you know, especially when you mention church music, um, the East basically used everything. They used all those different tones and chords when it came to worship music or spiritual music, especially when you think of the church. I myself being a, 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 a Tawahed or Orthodox Christian, you know, you know, we're like one of the oldest forms of that religion, you know, like Syriac Christians, uh, Coptic Christians, you know, the Egyptians and all that. We use all those chords, you know, like some people might call that evil. That's definitely a Western construct. And I think it was influenced by Pythagoras, you know, um, P Pythagoras basically did all kinds of stuff, you know, as far as he, he's to the one that I guess some people attribute to mapping the notes out and just, you know, I think he actually was the one that kind of spearheaded that philosophy of, of sort of good chords and and stuff like that or or you know devilish chords funny thing because even you know I, you know he's greek right um he um i mean a lot of greek orthodox chant kind of has some of those tritones too we have them a lot more you know um but a lot of ancient christian music is like that you have a lot of traditional musics from everywhere that has those tritones i mean you could talk about a lot of traditional African music, even a lot of traditional Asian or, or Far East Asian type stuff that has it. You know, listen to Gamela drums, you know, you'll hear those sort of dark sort of chords or, or scales and all that. I love the way the Gamelans, if you guys never heard Gamelan music, you should check it out. Um, uh, um, but even bringing it back. I, I, I could say I bear to differ on certain things, although I understood where he, he was coming from. Yes, there are certain things that you could do with chords to incite certain emotions and all that. I'm a musician myself, as you guys see. Um, but I still believe that it's the energy behind it. What do you support? Where do you, what do you, um, how could I say it? What do you believe and what is your philosophy and your spiritual state based on that? Most people would probably think of Christians, especially, um, as not playing certain things or, or, you know, because of just certain chords and all that. I kind of just explained that. But even to bring it back to something that he mentioned that I kind of, although I get it, I, I have to say that I disagree on it, you know. He mentioned something about heavy metal. First of all, heavy metal is ours. I don't care what anyone says. Heavy metal was not completely different from what black people were doing. You know, if it wasn't for, you know, I mean, if you want to go there, 
heavy metal, when you think of it in its sheer way of just the way that it, it it's projected, that all started with even Robert Johnson, even theme wise and lyric wise. And if you want to go for like further back, you know, I, I got to do a video on this, but I need to totally write this out because I've been thinking about writing this for years. Apocalyptic themes in music. You know, the black church was notorious for a lot of the way that we conjugated things when it came to not only our African traditions, but also, you know, that had to do with the faith, whether it be Nat Turner's speech about, you know, um, judgment coming up on the, the oppressors, but also just the apocalypse in general. Even when you think of, you know, gospel songs like Wade in the Water, they have those sort of notes. It's it's a very dark song. You know, um, gospel music, in a sense, has influenced a lot of things within America when it comes to even popular music. The other side of gospel is the blues. When you think of the blues... You think of all the struggles that we went through. You know, Tariq mentioned this too, and I admire that he mentioned that. All the struggles that we went through and um, and just, it was basically us just just weeping in a sense, you know. It could be anywhere from, from what we were going through through with the system and also things that we were going through in our, our, our other personal lives with a relationship or whatever, a woman left or, or whatever, um, but when you talk about this is this is kind of this is kind of going to kind of rock the boat and I'm going to be honest with you guys I'm not promoting any kind of demonic activity obviously because of what I believe but yes we even had a we even had a hand in that when it comes to rock and roll music heavy metal and no I'm not just talking about you know people talk about voodoo themes and all that I'm not talking about that um Though some people would would mention that I'm speaking about literally, you know, whether it was folklorish or not, you know, when you OK, here's an example. Listen to Robert Johnson. You'll understand why I'm saying what I'm saying. Robert Johnson was one of the first to kind of um, set it off when it came to talking about the devil and music and selling his soul and all that stuff and praising Satan you know, I love Robert Johnson's playing, you know, I dig, you know, just the mystique that he has, but obviously I, I can't get with the, the, you know, praising Satan, you know, like, I mean, it's kind of creepy to listen to when you listen to him, man, you know, like, but I'll be honest, like, you know, I don't think he was the only one, but he was definitely one to, to do that at first, you know, um, and then you fast forward when you think of not only the gospel apocalyptic things, but also, you know, the, the, the Robert Johnson's crossroads and how he sold his soul to the devil and all this stuff. I like what my mom always says, like, you cannot sell your soul because you don't own it. God pretty much owns all that, you know. So it's that's that was just kind of a, a an interesting thing that people thought that they could do that. But in a sense, we could say it's a metaphor for just you giving your soul over to something that is not good. Um, and it's, you guys could read the story of Robert Johnson. Um, it's, it's, it's a trip, but even bringing back to heavy metal, a lot of heavy metal had that in it because it was definitely the, the people that, um, pretty much, you know, were influenced by like a lot of blues and a lot of, of, of apocalyptic themes, you know, um, and then you had the heavy guitar, which I attribute to like th some of the earliest players, you know, like um, Chuck Berry, you know, um, Bo Diddley definitely was one of them that really put that on the map. You know, when it comes to I'm um, speaking just for, for black people. Um, and then you had Screaming Jay Hawkins, which he mentioned. Screaming Jay Hawkins definitely influenced the likes of Arthur Brown, Alice Cooper, Screaming Lord Such, all the shock rock um, stuff. But he not only influenced that, he influenced even subgenres of that. Like, you know, you have a lot of these goth, like goth rock type people. You know, they I mean, he was the first one to sort of dress the way that he did in um, 
and have those horrific horror themes. I mean, before the Misfits, before 45 Grave, who I'm wearing their shirt, I know the drummer of the band. I had the honor of having the drummer of the current drummer of that band play with my band at one point. Um, but that's another story. <laughs> also met the original drummer. I talked to him, whatever. Anyways, um, that's not the subject. But like a lot of those themes, you know, he was the first one to do that. You know, Screaming Jay Hawkins, definitely using more of the kind of like the uh, the the uh, obey a man type voodoo priest type thing, almost like in in, in a campy like sense. He was more comedy than horror, even though he scared the living hell out of people. Um, when it came to his performances, I like I, one of the guys. What's the name of that band? The Savages. Um, in in the documentary that I saw about Screaming Jay, if you guys get a chance, check that documentary out. It should still be on YouTube. Um, he said that that the industry was afraid of of two black men, basically Bo Diddley and Screaming Jay Hawkins, because Screaming Jay Hawkins came with that whole voodoo thing, and Bo Diddley was um, just straight up, you know, like kind of raw and kind of street in the way that he came off to some people. Um, not necessarily mean, but he was, un they were both from what he said, unapologetically black. Like they weren't, you know, they weren't, they were threatening versus like little Richard, who was my grandma's cousin, by the way. And Chuck Berry, you know, he, he mentioned that Chuck Berry that, uh, like almost seemed like, you know, almost like a white black dude. I don't like using terms like that, especially when a white person does that. And he said that little Richard might seem too effeminate, so it wasn't as threatening as a, a, a Bo Diddley or a, um, or a, um, oh, I just mentioned Screaming Jay Hawkins. But anyways, getting back to that, so that influenced that. And then you had a bunch of other slew of musicians, and of course Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix is a huge influence on heavy metal music, and people were even trying to attribute that to him before he died and he denied it i could understand yes heavy metal was a a a, a, um, a, 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 a label before it was a uh, uh, um, stamped as a label some people will say no heavy metal began with judas priest no i would say this heavy metal began really with black sabbath but there were people before that that influenced them and that pretty much presaged that genre and, and when I remember as a kid reading about a lot of this stuff, Jimmy was always in those publications like Circus and Rip Magazine and all that. Um, Jimmy added so much, you know, when it came to heavy metal music, people are still using the things that Jimmy invented within that. We talk about frequencies. No other guitarist has ever made his guitar talk made it seem like you had an invasion from Martians and all that. You know, for me, I think that was awesome. I've never taken drugs. Yes, I was into like a lot of psychedelic music as a kid. Um, but I liked it because I'm an experimentalist. I've always been, even before I even knew what that was, when it came to music and sounds. And so Jimmy was the first to do that on guitar. I mean, well... The way that he did it, I'll say that he wasn't the first, but the way that he did it, no one had ever done it like that. Yeah, people like Jeff Beck had fooled with feedback and stuff like that. And even, you know, you had Ike Turner having, you know, Rocket 88, which was a mistake of a busted amp, which made the distortion. But Jimmy was the one, I mean, between the heavy riffs, the bomb drops on the guitar and lead solos that he did, and, and just all the crazy noises that he did and, and the riffs and leads and God knows whatever. That was definitely presaging heavy metal in more way than one. Um, then later on you had bands, you know, although discovered later like death, bad brains, you know, which pretty much were pretty much like either pre punk or hardcore punk. And of course, pure hell, um, man, there's so many like you guys watch my history of rock and roll um thing and you'll you'll see what I'm talking about you know um yeah anyway my, I'm running out of minutes on my phone I'll talk to you guys soon I'm going to redo this video but I'm going to post this video just as a filler because I haven't posted it in a while